We are now recording. Okay, I'll kick us off then. So um, thank you for joining us and welcome. I wish this could have been in person as I'm sure you do as well, but it's still really great to see your faces. So many of you I haven't seen probably all year. So it is really good to see you. Um, on behalf of the board, I wanna take a moment to thank you for your support of Affirmations this year, whether that was you supporting us through our summer telethon or the Masquerade Bash, or I know many of you have already um, donated for our year-end appeal. So thank you so much. I also wanna acknowledge that there's many other ways that you've supported us. You've volunteered your time. You've shared our events on social media, which is so important. Um, you've, many of you have done birthday fundraisers. So however you chose to support Affirmations this year, please know that we appreciate you. I also want to give a shout out to our staff. It was a challenging year to say the least, but you rose to the occasion and you found truly innovative and imaginative ways to support the needs of our community both here in Metro Detroit and beyond, which has been a silver lining of all of this. I, of course, want to thank our board as well. We added four new faces uh, to our board. Um, Brianna Yule, who's on the call, Demetric Wells, Jennifer Johnson, who's on the call, and then most recently, Jamie Baker. We really feel that their skills, their experience, their perspectives complement our existing board and help us to ensure that Affirmations continues to have a strong, dedicated board. 2020 certainly wasn't what we expected it to be, but I think what we've seen time and time again is that all of you, the community, the staff, the board, you care about Affirmations and you're willing to do what you can to step up and support us. And so we really sincerely thank you for that. And so now I get to kick it over to Dave and he has all the hard work from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you, Cheryl, for that. I, 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 how do we even begin to explain 2020? And, you know, back in January and February, I were telling you all that for the first time, Affirmations was back in the black and we were all excited and we got the audit in and and then COVID hit and we had to close the doors and myself and other executive directors all over the country were really scared about what was gonna to happen to LGBT community centers. You know, I'm, I am proud to serve on the board of directors of Centerlink, which is the national LGBTQ community centers network. There's about 250 centers across the country and many of them are much, much smaller than affirmations with just volunteers. And, um, and some of them have not survived this. But I am happy to say that Affirmations is doing relatively well financially. And because I am your executive director, I want to start with the finances. I, I came back to Affirmations a year and a half ago, May. And that first May through the end of the year, we doubled cash flow. Many of you rem remember that. Well, in 2020, even with COVID, we have doubled cash flow again for this past year. And that means that we have over $400,000 at the end of this year in the bank. Now, yesterday, the board of directors approved the 2021 budget. And I wanna make it clear to everybody that in that 2021 budget, we assume COVID for the entire year because I needed to be as conservative as I could be and I hope I'm wrong. I hope that by the summer, I'll be going back to the board with a revised budget because we can all get together face-to-face -face for a black tie in the fall of next year. But I don't know that that's going to happen. And so we've assumed COVID for the 2021 budget, but the 2021 budget that was approved by the board of directors last night is an $800,000 annual budget of revenue and close in expenses just under that in expenses. That's only $50,000 more than the past budget because we are trying to be as conservative as we can. But when you think about ending this year of COVID with 400,000 in the bank, that's six months operating next year. That's a very healthy position to be in. 
and especially when you consider what's happening around the country with LGBTQ nonprofits. So I'm proud of that. That is the staff and the board and all of you and our donors coming together to make sure that affirmations, I'm gonna keep going over here and admitting people into the room, succeeds. So from a financial standpoint, your center continues to be strong and it continues to get stronger. As Cheryl said, from the board of directors all the way down to the staff. We are in the middle right now of hiring a program director. We've had some great, great interviews already. I'm excited for that position to start early in the year next year. Um, many nonprofit organizations and LGBT organizations aren't hiring at all. There's a hiring freeze, if not layoffs. Many are laying, laying people off, furloughing people. Uh, we haven't had to do that. We've been fiscally responsible. And look, it's not a surprise to any of you. Our three main buckets of revenue are special events, donors, and grants. We got killed in special events this past year in 2020. We lost the black tie. That's over $100,000 of revenue for the organization. That's a lot. And we couldn't do it, right? We had the wine party, which many, almost all of you have been to. We couldn't do the wine party. So we, got, we lost a lot of money in special events. But fortunately, we did much better in grants and we did much better in individual giving because the team, and John Joe Nutt, our development director, and Kyle are here uh, playing key roles in that department to make sure that we could make up for that lost revenue. So the audit, the auditors have already been engaged for the 2020 audit. We should be done with the 2020 audit by February and it will have affirmations in the black again. And that is no small feat. So congratulations again to the staff, to the board and especially to the donors uh, for putting us in such a strong financial position as we head into uh, the first of the year. Now, I should have mentioned, we will have a Q and A when I'm done with a few uh, talking points and I'm looking forward to talking to you all. But when you think of the shift that we had to make because of COVID, all of our groups from Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous and Senior Coffee Clatch and our youth group, all having to go online, that was not easy. And we, we, it was rough. Remember in the beginning when people were Zoom bombing, is that what they called it back then? And you know, people were a bunch of anti-LGBT language and then we had to initiate passwords and phone calls and people got to call staff before they can get into rooms. All of that stuff, <coughs> it was a learning curve for us. But you know what, you guys, this, it is a little bit of a silver lining. Just take like our, take our youth group or our trans groups. Brianna right now, I think it's on Tuesday evenings is running a, a trans group. And we've started to see folks from rural areas of our state, young people entering into our groups that never would have been able to come to affirmations face to face or trans folks from across the country coming to our groups. So that <laughs> then, a real silver lining. And frankly, when we get back to normal, whatever normal is going to look like, I think we will have some type of hybrid moving forward uh, with this Zoom technology and allowing us to reach seniors all over our state in the Great Lakes region and further and our trans community and alcoholics, all of everything that we do. So we shifted to that. We lost those special events. So we said, well, what kind of events can we do? We did the telethon. The telethon ended up going nine hours. It was a nine hour telethon. And we raised, we raised a lot of money during that telethon. It's something we're gonna continue to do, hopefully face to face, hopefully during Pride, during Ferndale Pride will be Affirmation's annual telethon. And there'll be a lot of face to face interaction with people coming in and out of the building and it'll be great. But so we, we did the telethon, we did a two hour virtual gala because we couldn't meet face to face in a black tie, for example. And, and we did the bike ride, which I hope you saw it because it's not gonna happen again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it again. I, people keep asking me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Um, but maybe other people will. I don't know how the bike ride might evolve, but. It, it still raised money for the organization. So we just tried to put our heads together. What are some creative things that we can do to continue raising money because we knew we were gonna take such a big hit in special events. And then, you know, little things, you know, Jay Kaplan doing theater readings and 
one man shows and things like that on Zoom. We've tried to continue programming. And of course we've continued our, our um, recovery and support groups. And then we shifted to food. You guys, as of last week, we have handed out 3,800 meals to our community since COVID. 3,800 meals. Just this past Wednesday, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we handed out over 20 turkeys to our community, thanks to Liv, who sponsored that. And, and I talked to the owners at Liv and told them how successful it was. And they said, next year, if you want 50 or 100, let us know. So, and it isn't just food. We have so socks. I can't believe how many socks are flying out of affirmations because people need socks or toiletries, um, you know, toothpaste and, and soap and shampoo and all of that. So they just drive up behind affirmations every Wednesday and Friday and volunteers and the staff say, open your trunk. We don't ask any questions. We don't ask if they're gay or straight. We just give them what, they're, what they need and we fill up their trunks every Wednesday and Friday and we're gonna to continue to do that. And so- Mary, don't be so rude. What did I say? <laughs> What did I say? That was rude. Oh, I'm sorry that oh. I had my, when I jumped in the meeting, my microphone didn't auto mute and my dog barked at my cat. So I was telling my dog not to be so rude. <laughs> All right. I was sorry like, to interrupt. Go no, ahead. No, no, it's okay. All right. All right. Uh, so those are all really, I think, I think all of us, everyone on this call right now should be proud of the pivot that affirmations made so quickly and the services that we are continuing to meet uh, our community needs. So I wanna talk a little bit about that. And of course, if you have questions again, we'll, we'll get to that. And, and other things, we put together this past year, the community centers network. There are 10 community centers across the state of Michigan. We are starting to work much more closely together. We meet, those executive directors meet. We just had some of you who are at the lunch and learn right after the election. And that was all of the community centers, Equality Michigan, the ACLU, the HRC, all talking to our community about what did the election mean? What can we do now? Um, any questions that they might've had that Jay Kaplan could, and others could explain. But just to see the community centers working together, we are only the second state. You know, I told you about Centerlink, the national LGBTQ organization. There are only two states that the centers in those states have their own uh, group. It's Pennsylvania and us. And so we need to continue to work more closely together with our sister organizations. I have always believed that. And, and you can see why it's so important, especially now. So it's not like we haven't had tremendous accomplishments this past year. We have. Um, I still, I will say again and again, and those of you probably, my staff probably gets sick of me saying it but the religious exemption remains the biggest threat to the LGBTQ community. We have seen in Texas, therapists turning away LGBT folks and saying it's their religious right to do so. We know that doctor right here in Detroit a few years ago refusing to see a baby, a pediatrician refusing to see a baby because the baby's parents are lesbians. And we know what happened with, with Amy Barrett on the court. So now that there is a six to three conservative court, I promise you we're gonna to start to see many more religious exemption cases reach the Supreme Court. And it will affect us in mental health care, especially, and in primary care. And for those reasons and more, because even if you're not, even if a medical provider is not homophobic, oftentimes they still lack just basic cultural competency of our community. And so when we move forward into the new year, we are going to pivot affirmations to much more robust health and human services component. And I'm gonna get much more into that uh, at the beginning of the year. It will be called the Health for All campaign. I'm really excited to tell you more about it. But I also want you to remember that when our food program is happening right now, people can still come get HIV testing. When we are open for the food program delivery on Wednesdays and Fridays, people can schedule an HIV test. Our mental health program, many of you know, right now it's primarily working with universities who send their graduate level students to us to get practicum hours by seeing our community on a sliding scale fee. Many of them are free. 
And then those cases are reviewed by a licensed therapist on our staff. Well, someday very soon, we're going to have many more licensed therapists on our staff and anyone, myself, could go see a therapist with insurance. So we will greatly expand our mental health capability. And I am excited to say that with our Health for All campaign and the direction that we're going, we, will, we have created a community consortium of care that has many partners that are a part of that consortium. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about that in the first quarter of next year. Um, I think it will be extremely important, but I don't wanna to get too into the weeds with it today because we're in the middle of our end of year campaign and I don't want us to get distracted from that. We need a strong, robust last push this year in our end of year campaign to continue to solidify the financial strength of our organization. But I am excited to talk to you again very early next year about the Health for All campaign and what it'll mean for affirmations moving forward in the future. Here I have to go with you. Now, speaking of the end of year appeal, we are right now in the, there you go, Deborah, thank you. We are right now um, in the middle of that. <clears throat> it's going very well. People continue to send in a last end of year gift. I encourage those of you that can give to give in our end of year appeal and just go to our website to, to figure out how to do that. We sent out many mailings and messages and we're doing really well. I think we're gonna, we're gonna end the year strong as you already know with uh, what we've talked about, but I think we're gonna be, we're gonna, the appeal is going really well right now. So financially we're doing well. I've never experienced in my entire career a year quite like this. I mean, all executive directors of LGBT profits are going, nonprofits are going to their boards and saying, here's the budget for 2021, but we don't know. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen with the virus and that's gonna change everything. People ask me all the time, when is Affirmations gonna open again? We will open when it's safe to open to groups and to the general community. But we are open, we are doing the food program, we are still doing HIV. Our, our counseling program, we doubled the counseling program that I was just talking about. We've doubled the amount of um, the intern therapists because during COVID, it's very stressful time for people and we're seeing an uptick. And so we've responded to that. <coughs> we've doubled the number of interns and we're seeing a lot of people, but it's all teletherapy right now. And by the way, that's another silver lining as I talked to you all, the teletherapy piece of what we're doing. That will also be a hybrid moving forward in the future so that we can continue to give therapy to folks in the LGBTQ community um, like this if they can't come into affirmations. So it has been one of the most challenging years of my career. And I know one of the most challenging years in many of your lives, but we're doing our best and we are more than keeping our head above water. And that is because of your support. And I just wanna thank you all very much for your continued support of affirmations uh, because I think you see the need, you've always seen the need, but especially now. And we're gonna to continue to meet that need. So that's enough talk for me. Um, let's open it up to questions from any of you. I'm happy to answer, or I have staff here that might be able to answer even better than myself or some of the board members. I see Tim is here and Cheryl's here and Jennifer's here from the board of directors. So, and Brianna, sorry, Brianna. So, Brianna, our philanthropy award winner, by the way, this year, congratulations. All right. So, what are some questions that we can answer for, for anybody or comments? You don't, it doesn't have to be a question. You could say, I don't like your sweater. I don't know. <laughs> David, I had a question on, uh, when you approach uh, corporations, companies for grants, what impresses them? Is that our involvement with the community, LGBT youth, uh, healthcare, uh, HIV? What, you know, when you present, what impresses them? That's a great question, Don. And, and and you named both of them uh, more than any other. It is youth. Uh, everyone wants to help our youth and a lot of our, you know, whether it's our long-term relationships with Ford and General Motors and Chrysler, DTE and others, often that is youth funding and health and human services. And so one of the reasons, 
I want to pivot affirmations to health and human services. You know, I, well, I'm from Michigan, of course, you know that, but in my five years in Los Angeles, you know, they have a $150 million budget and 800 employees in eight different facilities. But 80% 80 of that budget is the one building that is health and human services. That's mental health and primary care, right? So I have always wanted affirmations to, to grow in health and human services, not only because it's the right thing to do for our community when we're under the threat of the religious exemption, not only because it's the right thing to do for our community when, when you're just talking about basic scientifically accurate, culturally competent care for our trans community and our seniors, for example, but because when I'm gone, when I'm long gone, I think it is financially stable for the organization to, to have primary care, for people to be seeing their doctor there, for people to be seeing their therapist at Affirmations, for example, long after I'm gone. So we don't always have to ask donors all the time or grantors all the time, right? We will, <laughs> but it would also be nice to be generating our own income um, from the paid off building that we, you, the community owns. <laughs> Someone, someone's got to be on in the background. All right. What other questions do we have? Um, Dave, speaking speaking of the youth, how how has how has this year impacted the youth program? You know, in terms of youth participation yeah. and kind of their needs. That's a that's a great question. Um, we moved everything online, basically, Beth. We, the the drop-in center is on a platform called Discord, which is supervised by our staff. The numbers are actually growing. Um, the youth are, are, they drop in, they talk to each other, they play games, they hang out, uh, kind of like you guys in SKK. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have the um, more direct programming, our work placement kind of stuff, our, our um, we, in our internship program, for example, one of the youth have, that was supposed to be in the building doing an internship, because uh, yeah. I always thought one of the best things Los Angeles did was put their youth in internships across the campus of LA so that they could get experience in security or hospitality or marketing and communications or development. And then they worked with staff in Los Angeles who be, could become their letter of recommendation and their reference. Right, so we brought that here, and one of our interns, one of our um, media interns, for example, that works with Kyle, has done a great job and done a lot of work for us, and it's going to look great on their resume. Real world experience um, that Kyle can can help this person as a reference, and a so that's the direction that we want to go. It would have been easier if we could place them throughout our building but it hasn't stopped us from placing them where we might need them like social media and marketing during the COVID crisis. The governor eating at a fancy restaurant and the mayor of San Francisco. Justin's, um, Justin's here. He, um, he is currently uh, working with the youth program and uh, he's really, he's, he's grown the program this, this second cohort. And I don't know if there's anything you want to say about that, Justin. Um, yeah, so I, I took over in September when Ian parted ways and we, we had under, I think we had eight or nine youth in the program and right now we're at uh, 20 youth total for this cohort. So in these past couple of months, we've been able to grow it that way because I've been reaching out on my, my personal social media and to my friends. Um, I've been in contact with GSAs across the state one of the youth in the program is actually in Canada. So we, as, as Dave's been um, saying the, uh, when he was talking about um, hybrids, that's definitely something that I've brought up throughout the program with the youth because a lot of them aren't in the area of Ferndale where it's easy for them to get to the center. And it's that was one of my goals was to keep it accessible to all of the youth, just as Dave said, with all of our programming. And um, they, they, they've, they've, they've made a big turnaround, the youth, because in the beginning, you could tell that they were all starting to, you know, really feel the Zoom fatigue and everything like that, because they had to shift, you know, all their schooling and they're going back and forth, you know, between in-person and e-learning uh, even now. 
and they're 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 doing a lot better. It's it's still rough as it is for everyone, but the youth are adjusting a lot better to it. And um, I've definitely noticed a lot of them are starting to come out of their shells because at at certain times I would ask a question and it would be like crickets in the background, and now they're actively talking. And I've even had some parents reach out to, to me about the youth that are in the program that they're seeing the changes in their children. So I'm definitely glad with that. So it's, it's as it is with everyone and it has been this year, it's just a learning process and just kind of rolling with the punches at this point, but I'm definitely happy with where everything's going. And I'm definitely really glad that the staff and the board gave me the opportunity to, you know, help with this program. You know, Jennifer Johnson on our board, her, her child is also a part of our youth program as is, our, you know, our newest board member that Cheryl mentioned, Jamie Baker, unfortunately, tragically, her um, young child who was one of our youth was killed in an accident. And they started the Pennant Forward uh, nonprofit. Um, and we're working closely with them to develop, we have developed a Pennant Forward fund in partnership with Pennant Forward in Affirmations so that the next evolution of our food program and socks and toiletries and everything we just talked about will be the opportunity for folks to have a, a one-time phone bill paid or a one-time car payment. Or, and we're putting together the parameters of the Fennet Forward Fund with our new board member, Jamie Baker. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that as well. Um, Jennifer, I don't know if there's anything you wanna say about the youth program at all. Um, yes, um, I think it's an awesome program and thank you everyone for showing up tonight. I know this being on Zoom is like over here all the time and what have you. However, um, my daughter, she's very shy. She's very quiet. So for some reason, when she comes on with the youth development program, she is a completely different person. Um, I can tell you that personally that the um, that what I the difference that I see with her is basically what her teachers are seeing in her classroom. Her mm -hmm. teachers were always saying that she was very quiet, very reserved. And when I went to parent teacher conferences via Zoom, I was wondering who they were talking about. <laughs> they said, well, they said she's very engaged. She wins these debates in psychology and does this, that, and the other. And I said, who are you talking about? And they're talking about my daughter who was previously very quiet, very shy. She is very confident in herself. And I thank Affirmations. I thank Justin. Justin is very in tune with um, the parents. He reaches out and lets us know what's going on. There was a time where she she missed um, coming because she was exhausted from the day. She was knocked out sleep. And he reached out to me and said, is she OK? There's, there's things like that that I really, oops, I'm sorry, that I really appreciate um, that takes place. And so I just want to personally thank Justin and thank you all for the opportunity to allow me to serve on the board, to serve all of you. And this is our center. And thank you for doing all this. I'm just glad that we're all doing this together for all of us and for our children, especially not just mine. And, and thank you for that. And I just want to just want to mention, you know, um, Justin said Ian has, has left. Ian left amicably. He took on a job of LGBT cultural competency training for the for-profit world. So uh, it, there was nothing crazy there. It's just he, he got a job that he wanted to pursue and we wish him well. And, uh, and Justin, you're doing a great job with the program now. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, what other questions do we have? I have a question, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hey. Uh, so it's a comment and a question. Uh, my name is Greg Leshman. Uh, the first comment is to Dave and Kyle and everybody else on the board and the staff and, and the people that lead the, uh, the, 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 the groups that are helping everybody. Thank you. You guys done an amazing job. Uh, it, I came out starting with uh, uh, coming out over coffee uh, a few years ago and uh, uh, met the man of my dreams and uh, life has been great. So uh, hats off to you. Thank you, Dave, for coming back from LA. Uh, you've done wonders for the organization and uh, just Kyle's done fantastic with the events and uh, et cetera, et cetera. My question is this, other uh, LGBT community groups like Equality Michigan and Fair, Fair Michigan you know, they're out there soliciting our funds for their advocacy programs as well. 
does it make sense for affirmations to align with groups like this since they are, or are they after a similar bottom line for helping the LGB to community in a whole? That's a great question, Greg. And we do work very closely with Equality Michigan and the ACLU and you know the HRC of, of Michigan is in affirmations. They have a space in affirmations. And I've, I've offered that uh, to Equality Michigan as well, if, it, if, if they can use it. Um, as you know, in Los Angeles, I was the director of public policy. Advocacy and politics is in my blood. It's, my, it's one of my favorite things to do in this line of work. Um, I will always work as closely as I can with those organizations to advance rights for LGBTQ people. Um, if you're asking whether or not in the future there might be a merger or something along those lines, I don't know the answer to that. I am always open to talk to anyone in the community. You know, we, we received a, a letter yesterday that the Jim Toy Center is, is uh, leaving their building. They're, they're no longer going to have a building. And the Jim Toy Center used to be RAP. For those of you that remember, they used to be the Washington Rainbow Action Project. And I was on their board. Our finance director, Audrey, was on their board. That's how we met. And th that organization is very near and dear to my heart. So we're setting up a meeting to talk with their board of directors, hopefully, and just see if there's any, anything we can do to help. So uh, we, we have to help one another. That's why we created the Community Centers Network, for example. And so I will always have an open door. Affirmations will always have an open door. Talk about ways in which we can do this together um, better and uh, more effectively. I don't know, Greg, if that answered your question, but we are working closely with them now. For example, that luncheon I was just telling you about, Aaron Knott, the executive director of Equality Michigan was on the panel for that, as was Jay Kaplan. Um, Amy Hunter is the executive director out there in Kalamazoo where I used to be. And she's the co-chair along with myself for that, for the Community Centers Network. I will always do my best to work more closely with our sister organizations. And who knows what the future brings. I, hey, I'm always open to more advocacy work. It, it would be interesting to see if in 2021 that there can be some sort of, I don't know, shared, shared events so yeah. that people right. know that their contributions are going to help both organizations. And, uh, you know, just some sort of coming together would be nice. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Of course. What other questions do we have or comments, concerns? Hi. Hi, um, I'm uh, 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 um, new to this. I've been attending the uh, the session that Brianna, uh, uh, you know, uh, has organized since since the spring, uh, and I just had a question about the the grant funding that you get. So, um, I, I was just curious about what the what the you know the grant uh, sources you have are, and whether you've explored um, NIH funding because I mean NIH is just the hugest bucket of money out there, and uh, most of their money goes to research projects of various kinds, but you know, pairing with healthcare providers or other organizations that have a history of NIH funding uh, might be a way of, 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 you know, making those kinds of connections, but also um, it can result in some, you know, benefits in terms of, uh, of uh, infrastructure uh, funding and so forth. It, it kind of I depends could, on- I could not markets. agree with you more. And, and that is why I think affirmations must make the pivot to health and human services. So that right. you know, we have never really received, not really state federal dollars. I mean, we, when I left the last time there was a bit of a, a tobacco smoking cessation program that was state dollars, but, but compared to organizations like New York and Los Angeles and other LGBT organizations, nothing close. And I think as we shift to health and human services, and when I say shift, I don't mean we're gonna lose anything. I just mean that we're gonna grow in this area. <clears throat> then it will open revenue streams from local, county, state, and federal dollars. And you mentioned the NIH or, and also health and human services. Much of those dollars are passed through our county and then the county to the service providers. And now that Dave Coulter is there and we have some allies at the county, 
We have to make this pivot to health so that we can start to tap into those revenue streams. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, I mean, the, the administration has been making moves to sort of go through grants and with the, the NIH with fine tooth comb and, and, and sort of weed things out, but that's gonna stop. So uh, it's gonna be much more favorable uh, uh, atmosphere. So anyway, I really enjoyed your, your, your summary of how things are going, it sounds terrific. Thank you. So Dave, I want I wanted to ask Hi, Julia. you whatever happened uh, with I, with uh, working with Corktown in in those areas. Yeah, we met the with Health Cork and Human Services. Sure, as many of you know, I I have always wanted to make the pivot. And when I first got here, it's back when I got back to Detroit a year and a half ago, we were. They were the organization was already in talks with Corktown. Um, we worked very closely with them, and we tried to make an agreement work. And we just we couldn't we couldn't make the agreement work with Corktown. Now that does not mean that we've stopped, um, and it also does not mean that we would not work with Corktown in the future. This community consortium of care that we're putting together, and I don't want to get in the weeds on that. I don't want to announce who those partners are quite yet. Um, and distract from our end of year appeal, but we will early in the year talk about who has already signed memorandums of understanding um, to be a part of the community consortium of care. But what I will say, any LGBTQ competence, you know, scientifically accurate, culturally competent physician, uh, mental health provider, or organization who wants to work with us and it is beneficial for affirmations and for them and for the community at large, we would be interested in talking with them being a part of the consortium. Um, but we weren't able to work things out with Corktown and, and we wish them well. What else do we have? Crystal, I see you're down there. I can't believe you don't have any questions. <laughs> I guess not. All right, what else? I had a question. Um, so obviously this past year has been very challenging. Um, I don't need to tell you that. Um, so out of all the various challenges, what what would you say, Dave, was the, the most difficult this closing, past year? Closing the building. Uh, I, that's an easy one. You know, we work so hard to turn things around and that day. And, and we, if you remember when the virus was still, when it first started happening, I was mm. tooth and nail trying to keep the, you know, what can we do to keep the building open? What kind of cleaning regimen? I mean, and then finally it was just obvious that we had to close the doors. And I remember the staff all kind of meandering around the front desk downstairs. I'm sure John and Kyle remember too, and um, how sad that was. We had worked so hard. We had expanded hours, if you remember, you know, we we're Monday through Saturday, nine to nine. And to see the vibrancy, we had the fabulous fourth Fridays in Ferndale, right? When we had those programs of, every, it was vibrant again. It was starting to feel like we were coming back to life and then to have to shut the doors. I didn't know what to expect and how we were going to move forward and what this was going to do to funding and you know what we were going to do um but we pivoted and we did the best we could and and it has turned out to have some silver linings and i but i can't wait to get back to talking to the community coming in and out of the the doors of affirmations and seeing you guys i mean i every day i think about the isolation that our seniors face. And yeah, you know, we got a grant to give iPads to some seniors and you guys meet every Wednesday like this, but it's not the same. It's just not the same. And so, and it's not the same for me. I like going, you know, me, I'm a hugger. I'm, a, I'm Mexican American, man, I hug everybody and I can't even do that. And so that, <laughs> that was the hardest part um, and the uncertainty of what was ahead of us. Um, it's still hard, but it's more, it's less uncertain, I think, because this, because this staff is so strong and this board of directors is in it for the right reasons and the community has responded. And those that can give 
have given, you know, that internship program I was telling you about, that intern Lee, you know, Jeff Antea, one of our, our donors just gave $5,000 to make sure that we could continue to do that. For example, he's, he's just one example, Liam Thompson, who's, who I didn't even know when I was here the last time, he's continued to give. Um, you know, obviously Alan and Eric and Nancy and Margo and so, and so many of you and, you know, Brianna coming out of the blue and giving to the organization. We have some really great major donors that give large gifts, but then all of you continue to give what you can, whether that's 50 bucks or hundred bucks, you know how important it is. And so this has been a true team effort and the team is the board and is the staff and our, our army of volunteers and you guys, the donors, we are all a team. And I believe that, I've always believed that. And this team stepped up to, to save this organization and to protect our community. And next year, when we have the Health for All campaign, that's what it's about, protecting our own. This is not the first virus that we faced under an incompetent administration. And we did it together then, we protected our own then, and we will do it again, even if we start getting some bad decisions out of the Supreme Court. It's not gonna stop us. It's not gonna stop us from providing care for our community, our scientifically accurate, culturally competent care to our community, seniors, youth, trans, and no trans person is going to get turned away from affirmations from hormone therapy out of a religious exemption. I can promise you that. And they're going to get scientifically accurate care when they come to affirmations. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the future and what we're going to do with healthcare. And we won't discriminate against uh, serving our ally community. Good point. Good point. That's a great talking point when people come to affirmations that we do not discriminate based on sexual orientation. We do not discriminate when we hand out food based on sexual orientation. Um, I wish they could say the same. So Dave, I do have a question actually. Hi. Hi, Crystal, how are you? <laughs> good, good, good. Crystal, now, you I have a, Chris, before you ask your question, I have a question for you. Yeah. When, we, when I did this bike ride, did you think about the last one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I loved the last, the, the first one. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Crystal came with us on the first ride across. <laughs> that was fun for sure. So yeah, my question is, you mentioned that you haven't had to lay off or furlough employees. What is the staffing looking like now? Who, who do you have working for you? We have a small, mighty staff. There are five of us that are full-time and um, you know that's John Jonette, who's here, our development director. Justin is on contract and he's doing youth coordination right now. Um, Kyle, of course, is in development um, and communications and marketing. Um, we have John Douglas, who is our operations manager at the center, and Audrey Wachowiak, uh, who is our finance director at the center, also on contract. And then we are in the middle of a hiring process for a director of programs, which will be a very, very important hire, not just from programs, but you know, I say all the time, my first meeting I had with the staff when I came back from Los Angeles, the very first thing I said to them all when I walked in the room was, you are all development now. And that is true. Whether it is someone in programs, a director of programs is not just running programs, they are researching and writing grants. Most grants are for programs. So, you know, this hire will be experienced in, in grant development and in program development. And that's true for the entire team. Everyone has a hand in development at Affirmations. And programs. <laughs> and in programs. <laughs> and, you know, shoveling the snow. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think Lori Jean in Los Angeles has to shovel the snow out front. Oh, wait, it's Los Angeles. <laughs> she doesn't. Yeah, I was up on the roof, you know, with um, a contractor talking about our HVAC units on the roof. And I'm like, I can't see Lori Jean up on a roof on Los Angeles talking to maintenance. <laughs> anyway. What else? Hey, what Dave. Else? Dave, it's Gretchen. Yeah. Hi, Gretchen. Hi. How are you? I'm, pr I'm pretty good. Hey, um, I just wonder if there isn't something that the average lay person like myself, uh, what we could really do. I am, I'd really like doing something. Now I've been putting five bucks a week that I would have spent on Wednesdays to go to the meeting. I've been stashing that because I want to give you enough that looks like some money, you know? So at the end of the year, that's quite a bit. But um, 
And I, I did ask Kyle this once. I have a bad habit of going to um, Costco. <laughs> and and those of you who go to Costco, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I always have enough for a family of six, you know, and I would, and I try not to, but bottom line is I do. I would like to know, can, so what can I donate uh, that you could either pass out to the hungry people or, um, I mean, I can get, you know, can, I mean, if I have canned goods that have never obviously been opened, I mean, are they, is that something we can give to people? First of all, um, I think Nancy and Margo and Alan and Eric and Brianna, who are, you know, some of our largest donors uh -huh. would agree with me when I say to hear you say you're saving $5, you know, a week to make a gift. That is just as important as someone that gives us a twenty-five thousand dollar gift. So thank you for that. And well, it, well, it will be. I mean, for all of uh, uh, the coffee clutch, the seniors, uh, there's like say twenty-five, thirty of us regulars. And if we all give you five dollars a week for all the months we've been out of there, you know, uh, that would you know add up. But uh, I just right. feel the need to. Um, I mean, I don't know, do, do people come there to get food yeah. who would maybe use pet food? Is there something that's, I could donate? That's, in that? I, that's a great idea that I had never even thought of. Oh, Can really? You... Yeah, because I mean, if I was really in trouble financially, I mean, it would be hard for me to make the decision. Do I pay the light bill or do I feed the dog and the cat? I mean, you Anything know. Anything that you have uh, food wise or dog food or, any, or toiletries or toothpaste or any of that kind of stuff that you want to drop off to affirmations. Um, well, and even if you can't drop it off, we can go pick it up. Uh, whether oh, that I will, No, no, I can, I can run by the back door and say, you know, here's 24 rolls of toilet paper or something. Uh, Anybody you know. can do that. I would just come during, you know, when we're open for the food delivery program on Wednesdays, I think Wednesdays, Wednesdays are, is 10 to two and Fridays is four to seven. Is that right? Justin? Opposite. Yeah. Wednesdays is four to seven. Fridays is 10 to two. Sorry. Here. So well, Kyle seemed to think that in the interest of making sure everything was sanitary and safe to give, that you weren't taking donations from people like me. So I think at the beginning of COVID, that's when I kind of said oh. that we were unsure of what was, okay. you know, right. sanitizing all the boxes and things. But so I apologize for saying that. Oh, no, 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 that's okay. I mean, I just wanted to, I just thought that the stuff that I, I get from Costco, it doesn't even make it to my house. Like I could stop off and, you know, split the pack address or something. So, you know, it would be coming, at least coming from me, it would be safe, healthy stuff. Yeah. I guarantee it. <laughs> we would love well, to have it. Fuck well, yeah. Thank you, Gretchen. Okay, you're welcome. All right, it's 7.53, um, I don't, I, I'm happy to keep asking or answering questions. It's, um, I don't wanna keep you much more than an hour, but we still got about seven minutes here. If we had any more questions from the community. Is that, uh, is that Burl Ives in the yellow room there I see there? What? Watch it, Steve, Ives. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're after, you're after. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, Culver, man, every time, remember when COVID first hit and I would do one of these every Friday because mm, it was crazy time. Um, Culver always had a smart Alec, oh, you almost made me swear, Steve, a smart Alec comment about what was in my background every single week. And look at you with the whole world behind you. What are you, king of the world? I live alone. You know, I've been alone for eight months. I go a little nuts, you know, here, so. Steve, thank you very much for what you're doing with Outpost and helping us get word out about some of these events that we're trying to push. Absolutely. And hello to Tim, our, uh, our community historian. Yes. All right. What else? Anything else, guys? All right. Cheryl, do you want to you close us up here? Oh, gosh. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, we hadn't talked about that. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, Carol or, or Tim, we have or any board member. 
and, and nothing other than to say it's been really great to see you guys and to interact with you. Yeah. I genuinely miss you. So it's great to see you. Yeah, it really has been great. It's good to see your faces. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. I look forward to seeing you in a safe environment soon. Be safe. Have a great holiday. Um, I don't know what you did for Thanksgiving, but we all stayed home this year for the first time ever. And we had a, we had a Zoom call with 50 Mexican-Americans on it. And everybody, <laughs> everybody talking over one another, just like a normal Thanksgiving. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to get any tamales for Christmas, though. So that's disappointing because I'm not going to make them. <laughs> All right. And have a great night, everybody. It's really good to see you. My door is always open to you and feel free to call or email or text. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you more soon. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Right. Good night. Well, good night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.